Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Maui Jim Sunglasses. First Tellurium Corp, the future of mining. And Hardy, rods and reels. Hey folks, welcome back to On the Bench. Today I'm going to tie you up the red butt Doc Spratly. This pattern was originated in the Pacific Northwest, uh, down in Washington, but was uh, intended for the BC area, uh, up by High Hume Lake, which is one of my favorite lakes in BC. And it was originally meant to be a, a like a caddis pattern to represent the caddis. In larger sizes, it can be a dragonfly, and smaller sizes, it can be even a coronamid, different colors and stuff, a leech, or whatever. So make sure you have these materials handy before you tie the fly. For hook, I'm using a size 10 streamer barbless by Sprite. Uh, it's the S2200 hook, three times long and one times heavy. For thread, I'm using red and black thread. Um, I'm using 80, but you could get away with six for a hook this size. It's fine. The tail is natural guinea, as well as the throat, also natural guinea. The rib is a it's kind of a smaller flat tinsel. It's 0.4 millimeter by Semperfly that I'm using. The body could be black wool. I'm using the Dirty Bug Yarn uh, in black by Semperfly. For the wing, I'm using uh, natural pheasant tail. And for the head, I'm using peacock curl. I'll be coating the butt, the red butt, with the red zap super thin. And I'll also be using this, um, just some crazy glue, so super glue on the head. So to begin, you can go ahead and start your um, red thread on the hook. I have fished this fly with the red butt as well as a chartreuse butt. And it was quite effective, you know, a couple of times I tested it against the original when I was catching fish on it and I did better with it, and you know, a couple of times I didn't. So it's totally optional. This is not part of the original recipe of the fly. You know, sometimes that little hot spot is just all it takes, so I do like to carry a couple of these in my box. I uh, have fished this fly quite extensively. It was one of my, pretty much my go-to pattern in the Lower Mainland, that and the black and red micro leech. Uh, this fly is especially effective out in the Fraser Valley lakes. back over top and bring my thread all the way back to the front. I went just about a quarter of the way down the bend there. And when you get to the front you can just whip finish this off. So, cut that away. Next take your black thread, um, you know, six knots fine if that's what you have. I I don't. I generally don't tie with six on anymore very often. I didn't even have any, so that's why I'm using the eight. And I'm just going to tie down to the point um, where the barb would be on the hook, so that I just have that little red butt part sticking out. And now I'm going to bring my thread forward. And I'm going to apply, uh, you can apply a little super glue or uh, UV resin, whatever you have. I have the Raid Zap Super Thin that I really uh, like using. Fairly non-toxic as far as resins go, which I have a sensitivity to. So I always uh, use ventilation with resins unless I'm filming. <laughs> I want to fan stuff my window open when I'm filming right now. It's very good. I'm liking the new formula of it and the, br the new brush with it and stuff is really good too. So I'm just going to give it a little cure and light. Enough. Next, take your uh, guinea fowl. So in Art Lingren's book, the contemporary um, fly patterns of British Columbia that I have here, in this book, Sorry, it's a bit blurry because it's a macro lens by Art. Anyways, he does uh, uh, put the Doc Spratly in the book, uh, both as a trout fly and a steelhead fly. And I think the first time it was ever in publication, the fly was developed in 1949, I think in 19... Uh, 
53 or something that was put into publication as originally as a steelhead fly. So Art likes to use these these guinea feathers, I think, with the uh, the smaller white dots. So I have, you can buy like that, like an entire thing of guinea like that. <laughs> I just have the larger and I was lucky that it had just one or two of those feathers in, in, in with those. So I'm going to take about, probably about eight, eight to ten. Um, and just pull them straight out from the stem and then pull them off, pull them off. And now I'm going to take my thread, wrap it back to where I want to tie my <laughs> tail in. Right back to there. And then to measure the tail, um, I like it to be about half the body shank length. So I think it's meant to represent like a trailing shuck mostly, so you don't want to overdo it with the tail. You don't want it too thick either. And just wrap over top of those butts. You can make nice wide wraps and keep the body nice and uniform as you can. Like so. And I'm leaving a good like eye length here, eye length and a half, two lengths um, for my head. And well, you don't want to crown your head on any fly, but. This fly, it's, it's important because of the peacock um, at the head and stuff. So, next take your flat tinsel. Um, you can use a medium. This is a more smaller size that I've got. Uh, you know, on the larger sizes, the large tinsel is good. It depends. I, I, I prefer the smaller tinsel on these um, flies. Um, of this size, even. I usually tie mine in a size 12, I will say, like a 12, a 14, small. I do use the big ones as well, especially the olive color, like up in the caribou and up in cantaloupes and stuff. That olive color is really, really good. Um, but for when I was fishing the lower mainland lakes, I mostly used a size 12 um, for this fly. This fly's got an interesting little history too, which I'll talk about after I tie in the body material. So for the body, um, the original was tied with wool, and I'm going to use the dirty bug yarn from Semperfly, which is the closest thing I have to wool. And I'm just going to take a long piece and double it around my bobbin, and then I'm just trying to measure it up here. And then I'm just going to pull it down to the body and wrap over top of it. So that I have two pieces. I've got a little piece of the tail. I don't like how that's. Oh, it was the tinsel. Never mind. You just want to make sure that you wrap your um, body material all the way back to the tail and the tinsel. And then you can bring your thread forward. And now, after you bring your thread forward, you can take your um, bug yarn or wool, or you could use, uh, if you don't have to you use dubbing, seal fur is a really good substitute. Um, I've seen it done with floss. It's kind of got a, some people tie it, I don't know what the original looked like, but uh, some people tie it with like a cigar, more of a cigar shaped body, or a little bit bigger at the front than at the back. So with this bug yarn, you can kind of adjust it and go over top of it to make it the, the shape that you want your fly. This is kind of how I prefer mine, about the thickness I like and the shape I like. Just a little bit bigger at the front than at the back. So slight taper, so I'm going to give that some really good locking wraps. Bug yarn. Come back in behind it and I'm going to throw a couple whip finishes in before I uh, cut it off. Cut my thread off. Don't do that. You can just take and snip these tag ends off, and I like to wrap down over top now. Just build a nice smooth um, area for my hackle. I'm just going to wrap back a little bit into the uh, bug yarn. Now you can take your tinsel and just begin. Uh, wrapping up the hook, you could, uh, I'm not going to, I do actually, I just don't have my hackle pliers handy. You could put a little drop of crazy glue on the, in, uh, like on the inside of the tinsel. I've done that before just to hold it stronger on the, um, on the wool or the dubbing. I'm not going to be brushing this out, but, you know, 
I like fairly wide wraps still, even though it's a smaller tinsel. It's about five segments. I like when I fly this size, five, four to five. It's your preference, really. Like on the smaller sizes, it's meant to represent a coronamid. On the larger sizes, it's meant to represent a caddis. And um, you know, you, on the even larger sizes, like a sixer or something, it could be a dragonfly, it could be a damselfly, depending on the color, a leech. I've done really well with different colors of this fly. Like I say, olive, but also red and maroon are very good with this uh, uh, in this pattern. And you can use a variety of different uh, rib colors, but I find for the black, the silver is the best. And uh, I've done well with gold as well on, on occasion. Uh, for the olive one, silver and gold both work really well. And so, anyways, well, I'm getting out my uh, pheasant tail, which I'm going to use for my wing. Actually, I'm going to tie in the throat first, sorry, my, my error there. I like to tie my throat in first. Um, so the history of this fly is that uh, Dick Prankard, and I'm assuming he either owned a fly shop or worked in a fly shop. If anyone knows, they can uh, put in the comments. That would be great. Um, apparently, he was tying this fly uh, in his shop one day, and his friend, who was a dentist, who was Dr. Donald uh, Spratley, came up behind him quietly. They were good friends, and he startled him, and uh, and he broke his thread, as the, uh, so the story goes, and... And he said, you know, damn you, Don, <laughs> Doc Spratley. That's damn you, that's it. Damn you, Doc Spratley. I'm going to name this fly after you just for that. So anyways, I thought that's kind of a cute story. I'm just going to try to adjust my vice here. Turn my uh, rotary vice upside down just to tie in this throat. So I'm just going to tie it in right here. I've got a little, like about the same chunk size of guinea as I had for my... Um, it's off to the side. Hang on. That's not good. You want to make sure it's on there straight. Just hold that down and then make a couple of wraps. Oh, yeah, it's about the same size I use for my tail. I like to come back just to, just about to the hook point there with it. I might even shorten it just a tiny hair there. Next, take your scissors and just snip that off. Yeah, you can see I've got a little piece of something there. Okay, you can just lock that down. See how it's sliding off the um, guinea butt end, so you don't want that happening. You want to smooth it out. And uh, apparently, uh, Dick Pranker's wife Dorothy tied this fly many, many years commercially um, as a pattern. It was originally tied, like I said in the intro, for High Hume Lake as a caddis pattern. And uh, Doc Spratley used to come up here to BC and fish it up in the High Hume area lakes and do really well with it. And it also works very, like uh, I read in that or same article. Um, thank you to Richard uh, Ries Richard Riesler for writing an article. in. Uh, it's on Flyline um, online in 2002. He wrote the article. He's actually the fellow that took over Doc Spratley's uh, dentist office. <laughs> So thank you for that history on the fly. It was also used as a coronamid pattern. So, so I'm just going to take my wing here. and I like to measure it, mine, just to the end of the hook, kind of. You're gonna, it's going to shorten a tiny bit when you tie it in, not much, so you can just put it a tiny bit past. Um, I don't like a giant thick wing on this fly. Um, that might be a little bit too short. Hang on, I'm going to redo this one. I'm just going to take a chunk of the pheasant tail. I had a couple shorter pieces in there I didn't like, and it wasn't quite enough. I'm pulling it straight off the stem again. Um, another uh, material I have used for the wing of this fly, the feather wing, is the um, pheasant rump in this nice, beautiful, uh, rusty brown color. Works really well. So, got my chunk here. You know, make sure you do have enough. Is a bigger fly. Apparently, I mean, in the article I was just referencing, the fly works much better when it's um, scruffier. <laughs> the the uh, Doc Spratly thought, and I read that they they may have even uh, scruffed it up with their by chewing on it, which I found surprising, being as he's a dentist. But uh, kind of funny. I'm just trying to get the right amount here for my uh, wing. 
So it's kind of tied in like a hair wing, even though it's feather. Uh, and I mean, this fly just works because it's, it's got all those iridescent material elements in this fly, plus the silver and the black. I mean, the color alone, but the 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 pheasant tail and the peacock curl are so iridescent. You get that white and black barring in your fly. Uh, just like, you know, the original woolly bugger, the black woolly bugger, or olive woolly bugger with the white and the black grizzly hackle works the best. And it's just because, you know, the colors of the bugs that they're trying, you're trying to represent, that's what they look like. And they have those colors and they have that natural iridescence. It makes it look, you know, very alive in the water. So I'm just going to clip that nice and short. And at this point, I like to take a little bit of wax and apply it to my thread as I'm going to go over my butt ends because I know it's going to slip and slide off there if I don't see it will anyway so you can take it down to the head now and then sort of work your way back up but the wax does help with this uh, issue when it comes to building these heads so you want to make sure if you've got a piece of the stem or something sticking up in there you can just use your nail and flatten it out so, I just bring it back to the uh, wing, and I'm just actually I'm just going to tie just a tiny bit farther back, make a few more wraps, like so. I like the bigger head on there and stuff. So now you can take your peacock curl. So for a fly this size, I I don't have. Um, the only peacock uh, eyes, I prefer to use the eyes for all my peacock curl. <laughs> I'm down to like black and red and I only have the like the eye part left. So I'm using the bulk stuff, you know, that you can get in packages. And it's kind of a, a little bit bronzed out, uh, my, my color that I have. I need some more peacock curl. I'm actually thinking about my best friend Colette Stroud when I tying this fly because uh, it was her dad's favorite fly, I even named his dog after it, Spratly. So, and she uh, she got me some. Well, her husband Rob got me some nice uh, peacock eyes when I was up in Prince George visiting them the last time. So I need some more Colette. <laughs> so I just wax my thread. I like to wax my thread when I'm tying in uh, peacock because it is slippery as well. Oh, I went over top of my guinea. Just tie that down. I'm going to leave a little space here for the head as well. Um, to make it stronger, you could, um, you know, you could wrap it into a dubbing loop or or wrap your thread in it around it. I've got four pieces. I'm actually going to take one of those out. I meant to only grab three. That's going to be too much. So I'm just going to actually just tear it out of there. But I prefer to use the crazy glue. Just glue glue the head down. I mean. It's going to be the part of the fly that gets torn apart the fastest, and so the longer you can keep it looking, you know, at least on there. <laughs> Scruffy is good, like I said, but you want to at least keep it on there. So I like to just moisten my fingers slightly and twist my uh, curls together. And then build a nice something sticking up there. I'm not happy with it. It's like a little hair in there. Build a nice bulbous head on it. And then I'm going to tie it off right at the uh, front. To so make three wraps, and then I always bring a couple wraps in behind, back over top of it. Like so. I don't like to break it. I find it tears out that way. And I also like to right away, sometimes even before I snip it off, I'll throw a whip finish in there um, very quickly. Like so. And I like to give it two. Um, at this point, you can apply a little bit more uh, head cement, crazy glue, or resin to your thread. Let's do that. Just give it another whip. Like so. <laughs> Good. 
and snip away your thread. And that's it. That's my red butt uh, Doc Spratly. Thank you for joining me on this edition of On the Bench. Take care, everyone. As always, conserve the waters and tight lines.